Hi, this is Peter Hart. Welcome back to FAIR TV. Extreme weather doesn't often get the corporate media talking about climate change, but it happened on the February 16th Meet the Press. In the scientific community, this is not really a debate about whether climate change is real. The consensus is that it is. Uh, the majority of those who believe, in fact, that it is caused by humans. There are certainly some in the scientific community who don't believe that's the case uh, and who are skeptical about uh, some of those conclusions. But nevertheless, there is still this level of consensus. But it was odd to go from that to the debate that David Gregory actually hosted, which pitted TV science guy Bill Nye against Republican lawmaker Marsha Blackburn. She served up all the usual climate change denial, warning that we shouldn't make laws based on hypotheses or theories or unproven sciences. Now, it's bad enough to have this kind of false debate. But then came NBC reporter Chuck Todd, he wants to see no more of this climate change debate because it's just too political. Table that part of the debate because when you do that, then it becomes this like clubbing each other with, uh, with, with, with a political argument that takes away from what we have to do. Now this is a good example of corporate media centrism, which too often wants to avoid judging political debates on the facts. But the way governments deal with climate change is intensely political especially when one major political party thinks there's no climate change crisis at all. That's not something that can be tabled. It has to be challenged. The big media industry news was that number one cable company Comcast would buy number two company Time Warner Cable. Now that news led some people to wonder, how would Comcast own MSNBC cover this news? Well, mostly by not talking about it at all. But there was one exception. MSNBC's chat show Morning Joe covered the story on February 13th by interviewing both sides, by which we mean the CEO of Comcast and the CEO of Time Warner Cable. Now, as you might expect, journalists interviewing their boss is likely to sound a certain way. Co-host Joe Scarborough actually warned that one of his questions might sound like a softball, which it was. He wanted to know how it is that the company keeps doing everything right. Elsewhere on the show, he acknowledged that there was a certain conflict. We get our paychecks uh, from, from Comcast. They say, send our checks every two weeks. So obviously uh, we're not sort of cool and detached from this, this news. But there was little fear that anyone watching this would get the idea that they were somehow detached. I mean, even if I weren't working here, if I were working over at CNN or Fox or somewhere else, I would be saying it's a pretty stunning story about uh, just how successful Comcast is right now. Well, it's hard to know what's worse, ignoring a big story about how your parent company is massively expanding its power or treating this as an occasion to flatter your boss. And finally, last year a serial commercial featuring an interracial family set off a controversy. So many racist comments were posted on the Spot's YouTube page that the comments section had to be closed. Now, Cheerios decided to bring back that family in a new spot during the Super Bowl. And that led someone at MSNBC to tweet this. Now, it's not a huge leap to think that racists are probably more likely to be on the right. But the tweet nonetheless caused an uproar. Republicans threatened to stop appearing on MSNBC in protest. So what was the liberal channel's response? Well, they promptly apologized and fired the person who wrote the tweet. Because let's face it, even someone like Bill O'Reilly knows that this kind of thing is beyond the pale. Now for a cable news network to officially sanction something like that is simply deplorable. And the culture over there is, let's hate conservatives. That's what it is. That kind of thing is wrong, of course, except when Bill O'Reilly does it like he did earlier this week. The far left doesn't really care if we're attacked because they believe the USA is the root cause of worldwide terrorism. So to them, we're just getting what we deserve. Now, there's been a lot of commentary lately about how MSNBC has morphed into a liberal version of Fox News Channel. But here's a reminder of how very different they still are. No one expects Bill O'Reilly to apologize for saying that people he disagrees with politically are rooting for a terrorist attack on their own country. It's just part of the Fox culture. 
I'm Peter Hart. Thanks for tuning in to FAIR TV.